Welcome and thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future videos. This week we're going to be looking at the next line of the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom Come. Over the past three weeks of learning, we have been discovering how important prayer is and about a prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Do you remember what that prayer is called? That's right, it's the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a good example prayer full of memory, many things we should be praying for and that's why we're working to memorise it bit by bit. Let's look back week on week. Firstly, we learned that prayer is talking to God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We took some time to think about how and why and when to pray, discussing the importance of talking to God every day in every situation, not just when we are scared. We also realised that there are some do's and don'ts of praying. When praying, we must not be hypocrites, which is someone who says one thing but does something different. And we don't pray without meaning or thoughtlessly. We then started to look at the Lord's Prayer, the prayer given to us by Jesus. The first thing we understood in this section of scripture is pray like this. The important word is like, meaning it's an example of how we should pray and some of the things we should pray for. It doesn't mean we have to pray like this every time and it doesn't mean that we can't pray like this word for word sometimes. We then moved on to the first line of the prayer which is our Father who art in heaven. We discovered that the first two words are like the beginning of a letter addressing who our prayer is going to, our Father, and looked at how God is our heavenly Father and how our earthly fathers have some similar traits to those of God, unconditional love, protection, care and someone who listens, just to name a few. The next section of the first line is like an address on a letter to say where it's going to. Who art in heaven? The next line is, hallowed be thy name. Our names are special and important to us and it feels good when people remember our name and use it. This line means, let your name remain precious and holy. God is telling us that as Christians, we are supposed to keep his name holy by following the commandments he gives in the Bible. When we do this, people who don't believe in Jesus see us keeping God's name holy. They see that God is set apart and different. It makes people want to get to know Jesus, which is exactly what we want. As children of God, we want everyone we know to love Jesus as much as we do. So, moving on. This week's line is, Thy kingdom come. Do you remember the word thy means your? So in this instance, we're using the word thy referring to God. So you could say this what line as God's kingdom come or your kingdom come. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a country or territory ruled by a king or queen, but it is also a spiritual reign of God. When you study ancient history, you'll find that many kingdoms have come and gone. There was a time that the Roman Empire ruled the known world, and today Rome is just a city in Italy. And do you remember the story of Daniel, the guy who got thrown into a lion's den because he could not stop praying to God? He lived in a place called Babylon, and Babylon used to be the biggest city in the world. And now you can't find it on any modern day maps. Over time, every kingdom or country comes and goes eventually. Just becoming a story in a history book. But God's kingdom isn't like that. It has no beginning or end. Heaven will never become just a story in a history book. Heaven will last forever. You see, when Jesus was on earth serving others... Many people thought he had come to overthrow the unjust Roman Empire and set up a new kingdom. But when Jesus came the first time, he came to save us, 
from our sins. Jesus says he will come back one day and welcome everyone who believes in him into his kingdom. Jesus is the king of heaven and when we go to heaven we will worship him there. So heaven is God's kingdom and in Revelation it is said I heard a loud shout from the throne saying look God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. These things are gone forever. God's kingdom is where we go if we love God and follow him. Heaven is going to be an exciting place where all the people who have ever loved Jesus will live together. There will be no more pain or bad things because God will rule heaven. God's kingdom is going to be a place full of happiness and love. Think about a birthday party or Christmas or going on holiday. We get excited for and look forward to these things all year long. Now these are good things to look forward to, but we have something even better to look forward to. Spending forever with Jesus in heaven. Heaven is going to be one big celebration. So does everybody get to go to heaven? I mean, God does love everyone, so doesn't everyone deserve heaven? It is true that God loves everyone, but this does not mean everyone gets to go to heaven. If you go to church every week and never miss Sunday school, will you go to heaven? Not necessarily. We don't get to go to heaven because we have a perfect attendance at church. What if you're really good all the time and never say mean things, clean your room when parents ask and share toys with brothers and sisters? Is that how you get into heaven? No, you don't get into heaven just by doing good things. We are still sinners. Even if we do our best to do everything perfectly, we will always slip up and sin somewhere. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. It is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. The only way to go to heaven is to believe in Jesus dying for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. We have to confess that we are sinners saved by Jesus and not be embarrassed by that, to live with him forever in his kingdom. And we make those confessions through prayer. So, God's kingdom is forever. Jesus is heaven's king. In God's kingdom, we get to see God face to face and there will be no more pain or sadness. We will live with Jesus forever and to have this, we need to believe in Jesus. Jesus will return and welcome everyone who believes in him into his kingdom. Stop and think. What do you think heaven will be like? What do you think you can do on earth to make sure you go to heaven? How can you use prayers to become closer to God? Now we shall say together the Lord's Prayer. You'll know the first part now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Here we have some activity ideas. You can have a look online and discover all sorts of creative activities. Things you could print off, or things you can just make from your imagination. Thank you for listening and we hope you'll join us for some one on one of our in-person worship services on Sunday at 10am. 
If you're unable to join us, why not share your ideas, activities and crafts by uploading photos to our Facebook page, Goring MC and Family Events. Post it in the relevant post. This video will be up on there. Alternatively, you can email goringmcfamily at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing you soon.